Welcome back to Home Gym Hacks and Reviews. Stay tuned to find out if I think the chest supported row and hip thrust are worthy additions to the incredible Squat Max MD. I ended up liking the Squat Max MD so much, I got every add on that is available. Within days, the row and hip thrust arrived via UPS, on time, and in excellent condition. The row is nicely packed with the chest pad individually boxed, and an additional box which houses the J-Cups and UHMW. No directions were included, but Brian has a YouTube video on his website showing assembly. However, most everything is pretty self-explanatory, as there aren't many pieces. The chest pad is 18 inches by 11 inches and 2.5 and inches thick. The pad has a nice density that feels comfortable and firm compared to what a cheap pad looks like and feels like. The pad gets bolted onto a bracket, and I chose to have the Squat Max logo at the end with the settings, although it can go either way. Having an extension on the end of a socket wrench will make getting to and tightening the bolts easier. Brian had some foresight and included holes on both sides of the Squat Max so the J-Cups can go on either side. Each J-Cup is bolted on with two bolts, and the available surface space is about three inches, so the J-Cups will hold fat bars. The UHMW has 3M adhesive, and it's a quarter inch thick. Again, a socket extension will make tightening the bolts easier due to their placement. Next, the stabilizer bar goes into the platform from underneath. I lifted the platform and had my wife insert the bar. I then attached the pad to the height adjustment bar with the pull pins, and finally attached the pad system to the platform with an additional pin. One of the first things I did was number all of the settings with the silver sharpie, including on the height adjustment tube, and the seat. The pad has eight adjustments in one inch increments from 33 inches in its lowest setting all the way to 40 inches in its highest setting when the pad is parallel to the ground. The pad has two angle positions of 15 degrees and 30 degrees. For most rows, my settings are four and one, which puts the pad at 30 degrees. And for chest supported rows, I removed the J-cups and set up the bar to be pulled from the floor. In this space, I cannot use an Olympic bar, so I use an easy curl bar with collars as spacers so the plates don't hit the squat max's legs. I chalk the plates with two and a halves so the bar doesn't roll, and I attach the angles 90 grips for a natural and full range of motion. This exercise feels fantastic, and it's much easier to set up than putting my bench on plyo boxes. Also, it pulls on my lats nicely. This setup makes me want to do chest supported rows because of ease of setup and how effective it feels. The pad also works great for dual dumbbell chest supported rows or one arm dumbbell rows. The pad also serves as a great place for one arm preacher curls. Spider curls also work great, although the dumbbells might hit the bracket at the top of the exercise. The pad feels awesome for inclined dumbbell curls and chest supported flies to hit the rear delts and upper back. I'm not a big fan of the dumbbell pullover, but it works here. And the pad can serve as an upper back support for dumbbell presses and flies. If you don't have a seated bench, the pad can be adjusted and a flat bench can be moved against the squat max for seated dumbbell overhead presses, or a flat bench can be moved perpendicularly to the squat max for back supported lateral raises or bicep curls. With the pad in the 15 degree incline position and the deadlift bar in place, the squat max can be used for the reverse hyper exercise. I added plates on the hip thrust pin to further secure the deadlift bar. A band can be attached to the stabilizer bar for banded reverse hypers. The chest supported row system sells for $300, shipping included, cheaper than similar rack mounted options. Next, the transformer pin, which is included with all new squat max purchases, can change the muscles emphasized while performing belt squats and even lunges. With the eyelet closer to my hips, the load is transferred backwards compared to when the belt is connected into the top of the loading pin. With this setup, I feel greater muscular fatigue in the glutes and posterior chain. With the eyelet on the other side of the loading pin, the load is transferred farther away from my body, resulting in the load placing greater demand on the front of the legs and changing the squat max to an exercise that feels more like a front squat. I definitely feel greater muscular fatigue in the quads when the pin is in this setting. The only downside I have found with the transformer pin is the loading pin seems more likely to turn on me, but connecting the band seems to help. I left this out of my comparison video, but I want to mention that with the close stance inlay on the platform, the squat max is a great place for marches. These feel great for my lower back, and marches are a great way to warm up. Also, if you have two henny belts, or in my case, one henny belt and one rogue belt, the belts can be configured into a harness 
four squats on the squat max. The hip thrust pin sells for $150 or $190 if you get the deadlift bar. To attach the pin, remove the black strap from the loading pin, attach the 9 inch nylon anchors, and simply remove the loading pin and slide the hip thrust pin over the guide rod. Bands can easily be attached to the hip thrust. For hip thrusts, I highly recommend adding a small plate onto the base before adding 45 pound plates. I find it very easy to get in. The weight must first be engaged before disengaging the arms. And the arm farthest away may be a bit of a stretch depending on your height. The exercise shown here I see more as a glute bridge because of the shortened range of motion, but it feels effective. However, with the seat connected into the platform on the opposite side and my feet placed on the seat, the range of motion is greatly increased and this is definitely a hip thrust that feels effective and much more comfortable than using an Olympic bar or a Smith machine. Just from filming this segment, my glutes and hamstrings felt extremely taxed and this is an exercise that has a lot of merit. This can also be performed with one leg at a time. By spinning the hip thrust pin and making sure the nylon straps are positioned as shown so they don't hit the platform, the squat max and hip thrust pin can be used for weighted push-ups. When working out solo, this is much easier than trying to stack 45s on your own back and it's pretty easy to get into position and perform the exercise. The shaft of the hip thrust pin does come close to hitting my chest, but it never touches. Ultimately, I like both of these add-ons a lot. They are much less expensive than having a standalone chest supported row or hip thrust machine, and they are a lot more convenient than using the existing equipment I had prior to getting the Squat Max MD. Also, both of these add-ons can be used for quite a few hacks and additional exercises, increasing their versatility and value. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please consider liking and subscribing. You can find me on Instagram at Home Gym Hacks and Reviews. If any of my videos or reviews have helped you, please consider using one of my affiliate codes in the description of this video at no additional cost to you. Remember, if your equipment lacks, I got the hacks. Take care, everyone.